if you do look up at the lunar surface, and, and you can do this simply by looking up in the night sky with your naked eye, you will see the surface pockmarked with circular structures. Those are produced by impacting asteroids and comets. Now, of course, if you can see the crater from your backyard, that is an immense impact site. Some of those craters are the sizes of continents. The Earth and the moon was severely bombarded by a flurry of asteroids about four billion years ago. This process completely reshaped the lunar surface. And moreover, because the moon is in the same part of space as the Earth, it means the Earth was completely resurfaced at the same time. This period of bombardment immediately precedes on Earth the first detection of life. And so scientists for 40 years since Apollo have been sitting here wondering, could this bombardment have something to do with the origin and the earliest evolution of life on our planet? And what's teasing us is we know the answer is sitting there right on the lunar surface. All we have to do is reach out, return to the moon, and collect the appropriate samples and bring them back to Earth. The moon tells us, it teaches us, that 3.9, 4 billion years ago, at some time like that, the moon was bombarded by about 1,700 asteroids, produced 1,700 craters. We can count them on the lunar surface. Well, the implication is that 10, 15, maybe 20 times more craters were produced on the Earth. It's a bigger body, <laughs> larger gravity well. Those processes would have produced over 20,000 impact craters, some of them the size of continents on the surface of the Earth. That would have devastated conditions on the planet's surface, vaporizing water, uh, creating these rock steam atmospheres that would be completely untenable for life, at least as we know it. But those very same impact events are heating the subsurface of the, of the Earth and it, uh, that heat is able to heat the water that naturally occurs in the subsurface. It causes that water to then circulate, causing impact-generated hydrothermal systems. And we think these impact-generated hydrothermal systems may have been perfect crucibles for prebiotic chemistry to evolve to the point of generating life. And once life had been generated, these are perfect environments for them to persist. Interestingly, our biologic colleagues, uh, this isn't our own work, but our colleagues in the biologic community tearing apart the ribosomal DNA of living organisms have been able to trace back the most ancient biological signatures of life on Earth, and what they find is a fascinating tale. The story seems to be a life evolved and persisted originally in hot water hydrothermal systems. Why not impact craters? Impact cratering has affected not only the geologic but the biologic evolution of our planet. And the key to understanding this process is an impact event that occurred 65 million years ago where it looks like an asteroid plummeted through the Earth's atmosphere and struck uh, what is now Mexico and created a blast that was so energetic that it changed, modified dramatically the environmental conditions around the Earth, leading to the extinction of dinosaurs and most forms of life on Earth. Now you might say, well, how do we know about this impact event? I don't know of an impact crater in Mexico. The fact is it's buried, and it took some detective work uh, to locate that impact site and to piece together uh, this story. And it illustrates, though, the wonderful power of exploring the solar system. We were able to locate that impact crater using the lessons learned by studying similar events on the moon. We realized in the post-Apollo era that these impact craters excavate a tremendous amount of rock, that they eject that material uh, out of the crater. On the Earth, that material rains through the atmosphere and blankets a large fraction of the Earth's surface. And by, with that knowledge, we're actually able to seek out and try to locate some of that rocky debris 
and like Hansel and Gretel following breadcrumbs, we were able to follow that debris to the impact site uh, and discover what we now call the Chicxulub Crater in Mexico. It's a wonderfully uh, large impact site. This is uh, arguably the best preserved uh, impact basin on the Earth's surface, although it has been buried. Uh, geologic processes occurring in the Gulf of Mexico produced a lot of seafloor sedimentation that eventually filled in and buried the crater, so it's not visible at the Earth's surface, but it's the type of thing that we have been able to probe by geophysical imaging of the sur subsurface and, and by drilling. But the point is, impact cratering in Earth's past has affected not only the geologic but the biologic evolution of our planet, and we were able to deduce that in part by the lessons we learned by studying the moon. And you just have to wonder what other things can we learn if we go back to the moon and explore that planetary body further.